What can the COVID accelerator teach us about accelerating climate impact? That was the topic of the climate and COVID town hall. These are people from the air miners community, from the climate community, and from COVID accelerator getting together to talk about like, what have you seen in terms of like lessons learned or in terms of things that we can that we can bring from the COVID world into the, the climate world because there's never been anything like this in terms of mobilizing around a huge global catastrophe. This is this is a, a, a there's a big lesson in here and there's that's actually it turns out there's a, there's a lot of lessons and we talked about what are we seeing right now masks masks came up in this discussion because one of the people was talking about she had donated masks to a hospital, but those masks she had because of the, the wildfires in California. So in that moment, we all started to talk about what is the connection between uh, climate and COVID? Well, these, these masks seem like they're kind of at the center of it. These, these N95 masks are for, they're for wildfires, but they're also for COVID outbreaks. So in that sense, the, the mask could be kind of the symbol of like both climate action and COVID action. And maybe there's some potential there for uh, just making that more of a, a symbol of the culture of, of climate action. It starts to bring in more of the health themes too that, you know, I've realized I've, I've heard come up a bit in terms of what if we thought about climate change as mostly a health problem. Um, for example, Arnold Schwarzenegger did a great, uh, a great video on YouTube but maybe two years ago about how he saw just climate was really about air pollution, it was about health impacts. I haven't seen anybody really take the ball and run with that, but maybe there's a connection there in terms of you know, what's happening with masks as a, as a symbol of climate action and, and COVID action. Um, those symbols matter, right? We're talking about breathing. Fundamentally, COVID interferes with your breathing. So does, so does the climate when things get weird. Um, the other takeaway was, um, and it's kind of along the lines of, of learning what works for COVID, was this idea of, of teams matter and not so much skills. Like we see a lot of people in the, in the climate world you know, you come in with incredible skills and maybe you just get told like, well, the best thing you can do is compost or recycle. But like, you know, I've, I've studied engineering. I have a network in Silicon Valley. Like, is there any way I can use those more developed skills rather than just like washing out milk jugs? Um, and that's something that I think the COVID, uh, the COVID crisis has, has brought up really well is it's, it seems to enable people to, to work with their higher level skills, whether it's designing masks or making masks, whether it's um, participating in a, in a COVID competition of some sort. There's still kind of like the financial stuff, like, oh, give your money here or give your money there. I think the climate world has that too. But um, especially in the, in the COVID accelerator, I've seen there's such a powerful thing that happens when you're able to match people with skills and turn that into a team and unleash that team on the world is really, really powerful. And we all came away thinking that, gosh, like better understanding of teams could really help move the needle more on, on climate action. It's not just individual action. It's not just government action. Those are kind of the two, the two common uh, directions. But what if we started to think about team action and uh, putting people together and, and building, building solutions? Uh, on the note of solutions, uh, problem finding seems like something that uh, really was a, was a big takeaway with COVID, was it was easy to find the problems. Um, but with climate, you know, people in the climate industry are going to say it's like, oh, it's, it's easy. The climate's changing, right? It's, it's the biggest change ever. But like, it's not. Like the, the, the carbon dioxide in the air, like to this day, I can't see, smell, or taste the difference from like 1990 or whatever, right? Like the carbon is rising, but it's invisible. So um, what we need are better ways to be able to, to find problems. Finding solutions is obviously super important. Uh, and being, you know, opportunistic about uh, finding solutions is, is good. But like, I think there's there's certainly a role for like, be better at finding problems and, and pointing out acute problems. So one of the, one of the thoughts there was helping, um, helping people visualize carbon data better, helping visualize air pollution. There's been some great dashboards made by like Purple Air, for example, um, but there could be a whole nother layer of those. And I think that when we look at COVID, right? Like think about all the dashboards and maps and stuff that you've seen spring up. There was one that was built by a, um, a kid in high school uh, who was built like the fourth largest COVID dashboard or something. He was on the CNN or something like that that was interviewing him being like, yo, why did you build this? And there's a huge need for, for dashboards and visualization. Um, obviously there's a need for carbon capture. So 
in terms of the, the raw technologies for things like direct air capture, and I tell people this all the time, there's in terms of the carbon capture industry, in terms of air miners, there's well less than 10,000 people working in this space and potentially more like, you know, on the order of a thousand to 2000, right? So there's like way fewer people than you would expect. So working on carbon capture, working on new technologies to, to grab onto carbon capture, uh, grab onto carbon, um, helping people understand carbon credits, like sort of has to do with visualization, sort of has to do with technology to pull carbon, but like somewhere in the middle, there's this thing of like, here's this stuff that's sometimes useful, sometimes not, it's called carbon dioxide. How do we kind of meet in the middle and build a build an ecosystem around that? Um, so that, that problem finding is something that is, uh, has been very different in, in the COVID accelerator. Finding problems has been, has been easier. There, there are you know, people that are sick, people that are hungry, uh, people that are, that are tired. How do you solve for that? With climate, it's a bit more invisible. And so tools to help, if you can help build, tools to help visualize, tools to uh, work on capturing carbon molecules, uh, new business models for, for selling carbon credits or, or adding value to carbon credits. Those are all things that, that matter. So we came out of this discussion knowing that COVID action and climate action have a lot in common and there's a lot to learn. We, we thought of symbols like masks as something that are, are common in COVID and climate. How can we use that symbol, that symbol of, of health or symbol of pollution, how can we push that forward in the, in the climate world? Maybe it means like an advertising campaign that advocates for you know, people of the future wearing N95 masks all the time, not just because of COVID outbreaks, but because of climate change, because of other things that happen where you can't control the, the quality of the air. Um, fundamentally, this comes down to down to breathing. Also, looking at the 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 team angle, the skills angle in in climate, sometimes that gets vague, and it's hard to say. Well, here's what the here's what the problem is. Here's how I can apply my skills to it. How can we get better at that? How can we match make individuals to build teams rather than just match make individuals to problems? Um, sometimes that just being just having the problem can sometimes fall short. Um, but that said. In the climate world, we really do need the problem itself to be better visualized. We need to, the problems to be better visualized. So find problems in climate, whether it's with visualization, whether it's inventing new carbon capture technology or building business models for carbon credits. Those are all problems that need a lot more uh, attention brought to them. This is a problem. Um, so that's, that's my thoughts coming out of the COVID and climate town hall. Uh, let me know. I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Are you seeing, what are you seeing in common with climate and COVID?